Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us to have taqwa of Him, consciousness, awareness. And then Allah says, examine over what you have prepared for tomorrow. This is a profound verse. It is a profound verse because every wise person, every single intelligent person prepares for the future. Do you not have investments? Do you not have 401ks? Do you not have a retirement plan? Do you not have a goal and a vision about your life, about your economic issues, about your family? You all have goals and you think about them. But Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, as you're thinking about all of these other goals, there is a tomorrow that is more important than the tomorrow of this world. And that is the tomorrow of the hereafter. Allah calls the hereafter tomorrow to indicate two things. Number one, how quickly this world will go away and the next world will come. How quickly, when we have gone away, it will appear as if this whole world was nothing for us. And number two, because literally it is going to be tomorrow for some of us. I.e., none of us knows when it is our last day. None of us is guaranteed. And especially in these last 10 months of the pandemic, Wallahi, how can we be blind about the reality of death when we are losing our family and friends and colleagues like flies? When every single Jum'ah we have to stand up and announce the deaths of other people, how can we not contemplate that preparing for tomorrow? وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Today the announcement is about a colleague, a friend, an accomplice. Today the announcement is about the father of so-and-so, the brother of so-and-so. And tomorrow the announcement will be about me and you. Tomorrow the announcement will be about me and you. This is the reality. When that announcement takes place, make sure you are prepared for that day. So Allah calls the hereafter tomorrow because number one, this world is so quick and short. And number two, because literally it is a tomorrow for some amongst us. There will be some, this will be the very last year we are on this earth. It is a reality. It is not something that I'm telling you that you do not understand. There will be some, this is the last, maybe even Jumu'ah on this earth. There will be some, it is the last year, the last Hijri year, the last Gregorian year. So literally prepare for tomorrow. And then Allah Azza wa Jal <coughs> repeats the first part, Wattaqullah, to indicate there is no preparation better than the taqwa of Allah. The ultimate preparation for tomorrow is the taqwa of Allah. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Prepare for the journey. The Arabic word zad does not have an English equivalent. We say packing for the journey. We say you get ready for the journey. This is what zad means. So Allah says you have a journey. وَتَزَوَّدُوا Prepare for that journey. Pack your bags. Make sure your affairs are in order. But the journey is the journey of life. So Allah says, know that the best preparation is the preparation of taqwa. And then Allah Azza wa Jal follows up with the second verse. Don't be like those who forgot about Allah. Don't be like those, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ Don't be amongst those who forgot about Allah. What does it mean to forget about Allah? Does it mean that you, you deny the existence of Allah? The atheists and agnostics? That is not the primary reference of this verse, even though of course it is included. The primary reference of this verse are those who neglected the rights of Allah. By forgetting the huquq of Allah, they forgot about Allah Azza wa Jal. By forgetting about the obligations, the religious rulings, the haram and the halal, by neglecting the sharia, they neglected the one who revealed the sharia. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ The context of the surah is about the other faith civilizations, the Bani Israel and the others that knew Allah. It's not as if they became agnostic or atheist, but they neglected the commandments of Allah. They didn't follow the sharia Allah had given them. And so Allah concludes this surah, the whole surah is about that group of people. The ending of the surah, then Allah says, learn from them. Don't be like those who say we believe, but they don't demonstrate that belief in their action. Don't be like those who say we are the chosen, we are the ones who are Muslims and this and that. 
but then their lifestyles does not indicate, it does not exemplify the Sharia of Allah. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ Allah calls them neglecting Allah, forgetting Allah. Then what is the consequence if we neglect Allah? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ The fa here is a consequence, is a result. Because they neglected Allah. And this is a very, very profound, spiritual, psychological verse. And I want you to contemplate this. As a result of forgetting Allah, Allah caused them to forget themselves. This verse requires to be due justice many, many lectures, but we don't have time. Think about it. When a person does not follow the Sharia, ah, they typically do so because they remember themselves or they follow their own desires. When a person neglects the Sharia, ah, it's because he has prioritized himself over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet Allah says, this group that neglected the Sharia, ah, as a result, Allah caused them to forget themselves. Even though we assume the reason why they're neglecting the Sharia ah, is because they're prioritizing themselves. And Allah says, no, that is not the case. That is not the case. When you turn away from religion, when you turn away from Allah, when you turn away from obedience and worship, you turn away from your own purpose of existence. Your own meaning of being here. Your nobility of purpose. Your cause for creation ceases to exist. Of what use is life? Of what use is life if we do not have a connection with Allah? Of what value is our human life if we do not imbue it with meaning and dignity that we get from our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are no better than animals if we neglect Allah. In fact, animals are better than us because animals worship Allah in their own way. Every animal is praising Allah, but you do not understand their tasbih. So, when a human rejects or neglects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they end up rejecting or neglecting their own purpose of existence their life becomes meaningless. And that's why Allah is saying, don't be like those who neglected Allah. Because when you don't have Allah, you have nothing. When you don't have Allah, there is no purpose in your life. There's no higher order, there's no reason for you to be here. So Allah is reminding us that don't be like those people. Worship me, believe in me, pray to me and you will discover meaning in your own life. Your lives will have meaning. Your lives will have nobility. And this verse is so powerful because it links our meaning and value to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, dear Muslims, dear Muslims, establish a connection with Allah and you will establish a connection with your own existence. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your life will take on meaning. Bow your head down to Allah and your existence will become noble. This is what this verse is telling us.